Although I typically focus on the 700 point level Lamar event as the cash cow builds on the channel, I have had quite a few people request to do some kind of build for the spa equivalent of that. It's a full hour instead of a half an hour, it's 800 points instead of 700, and you get a flat million credits or 1.5 million if you get it clean which, spoiler alert, I did on this occasion with this car. So this one is technically not quite as good in terms of earning cash, but I do know that for some people, you do like to do this one to change things up a bit. So for those people, I hope that you find this one beneficial. And for me, I chose this car because this is a machine which I feel is kind of undervalued. It's the non-group version of the Bugatti Vision GT. So it's a million credits, it's not in group one, it just has a flat point level, and of course it has four wheel drive, which is a nice advantage. You've got DRS as well, in terms of power it's pretty high, there's not too much which you can do to it in terms of modification. So my advice on this one, and the reason in particular why I'm using this vehicle, is because it has so many advantages. The fuel use on it is very good. The level of grip is very good as well because of the four wheel drive, but also crucially for an event such as here at Spa, you will find that you've got nighttime driving where you need good lights. This has great lights, but more importantly, you have a lot of rain and a lot of wet conditions. So in addition to using the intermediates, having four wheel drive as well makes it that much easier. Control is fantastic. You'll never go off track if, you know, unless you drive it ridiculously. But in terms of building the vehicle, you don't even have to do that much to it either. So as far as the intermediates, of course, that helps by lowering the point level. And I actually did not change the tires at all through the whole event. You will need to refuel. And again, I'll show you that in just a second. But as far as the tires, you can run the whole thing on one set. So they'll be red, but it doesn't matter because you've still got four wheel drive anyway. So as far as the suspension, there's not too much that you can do to that anyway, but we do have the springs on about 3.7. So 3.7 rear, 3.75 front. As far as the dampers, they're 30 and then 40 and 35. The camber you cannot adjust. I've got neutral toe on the rear and towed in a little bit on the front. That's to help the turn in to kind of fight against that bit of, you know, uh, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive understeer that cars like that tend to have. As far as the diff, 25, 10, and 50 is what you're already working with. The center split is 30, 70, which you can't change anyway. You will want to have the ballast, the fully customized ECU set to 70%, which is all the way down, the ballast all the way up to 199, and this part could change. It very well could change in future because, of course, with updates, point levels do tend to fluctuate a bit. So as you can see, this is right up under 800, so you might need to adjust this in future. And then as far as the power restrictor, that's on 78%. So it's still got a pretty hefty amount of power. 887 is pretty good. The weight is quite high, just under 1600 kilos. But, for, you know, for a Bugatti, a four-wheel drive one, yeah, it's not too bad. And as far as the ballast, I've put that 40% toward the front, which of course helps with the point level, but it also means it's still a 49-51 split, which is pretty good. That's like LMP1 or LMP900 kind of weight distribution. You cannot adjust the transmission. Thankfully, you don't really need to. I have fitted the hydraulic handbrake, which does come in handy sometimes if you just want to brake the rear end more so. Of course, you could change that on brake balance, but you know what I mean. And then as far as everything else, well, you can't really do anything else to it. So that's it for the build. I will briefly jump jump out into the uh, menu, that's what it's called, a menu, <laughs> and jump over to the world circuits to show you the event. It's pretty easy to find, but for those who don't know, you want to, of course, when you've leveled up enough in the cafe menu, go over to Europe, go to the top to Spa, and then just jump along until you see the 60 minute endurance. That's the one right there, million credits, and it's as simple as that. So you're already under 800, of course we'll jump into the race now. And of course in the event itself, you'll see some nighttime racing, some of the early stuff when I pitted in, the one occasion through the entire event where you pit in. And again with 880 or so horsepower, even restricting all the way down, really leaning out that fuel, you can get so many laps out of this thing. It's like, I think, 15, 16 laps, I want to say something like that, which is pretty damn good. So there's not much of the race left to do at that point. So it's a fantastic car to use, in my opinion. It's not the most interesting of cars, but it just kind of gets the job done. It's easy to drive. It's quick on the straights. You've got the DRS as well. The fuel use is pretty excellent. It's fantastic in the rain and having the intermediates means that you never need to change them. You don't really tend to lose that much on lap times either. My best was around a 225. I'm sure there are quicker cars than that, but that's not too bad at Spa. Certainly more than quick enough against the AI. And as you'll see toward the end of the race, I was so far ahead, 
you'll lap everything on the grid. I'm sure there's plenty of cars that you can do that with anyway, but you'll lap everything. And I ended up spending like the last five minutes just waiting at the finish line for the sake of not doing an extra couple of laps. And even then, the nearest car was like five minutes behind or something like that. So it makes the event super easy. Try to keep it as clean as you can. Try not to cut any corners. Break a little bit earlier in the wet in particular. And I'm not sure how varied this event gets compared to Le Mans in terms of how often the bad weather is there. I think every time I've run this race, it does rain. So I think that's a pretty consistent thing here. Whereas sometimes at Le Mans, it doesn't rain at all. That doesn't seem to be the case with Spa. But correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe some of you have had an event where it doesn't rain at all. I did inadvertently bump another car and I did actually go off track and bump the wall at one point when I was distracted from the screen. But even then, I still got the clean race bonus. So it's not bad. I thought this race was a lot more restrictive than that. Avoid the overtakes if you get a, a yellow flag especially during the rain sections because that's when the AI will commonly make some mistakes and go off track. As long as you keep it clean in that kind of sense, you should get the bonus half a mil and 1.5. It's not the biggest earning, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. 1.5 mil in an hour, plus it's a more interesting race for some than just doing Le Mans or Tokyo over and over again. So if you do decide to use it, maybe a car that you hadn't considered, I hope of course you enjoy it and potentially earn some cash out of it as well. But stick around for more cash cow builds. If you haven't checked out the ones that I've done for Le Mans, then definitely check out those and I'll see you next time. But for now, thanks for watching.